All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ahashem, Yahweh Shai, the Anasai apostles slash elders, which are Jim Mess, who rule well, and blessings and salutations to you, brothers, that they're teaching and doing truth and sincerity. I'm going to say again, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. And I say that, and foremost, through the Spirit, it's a blessing to be in this truth, man. Because the lesson I'm going over today, I'm not going to be speaking that long because I got a bunch of video clips that I want to play afterwards and uh, <clears throat> some interesting videos. The brother Yashi Wamba went over it. You know, they got uh, uh, pedosexuals, right? So let's get straight into scriptures, right? And we've been bringing this out for like the past month, I believe. Uh... And through the spirit, we've just been bringing it out continuously. You know what I'm saying? The subject matter just kept on bringing it up. So we're going to go into Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. Um, so uh, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. All right? And that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So that, the, the, um, the pedo uh, uh, sexual that one was nothing but a slippery slope from being a homosexual. All right? What is that covering? It's talking about America and its laws. You know, I, I, seen a, I seen a bitch going to rant talking about how it's fucked up. It ain't right. It ain't natural. What you think homosexuality is? It's not right and it's not natural, but you gladly accept that. Now, they're, they're able to infiltrate the system. Now, you didn't accept that. Now, it's a slippery slope. That's all it is. That's all. And, and like like the guy said in the video, everything he said wasn't right. But one thing he said that I like, he said it wasn't a slippery slope. It was a snowball effect, man. You know, they're going to pass pedosexual, animal sexual, uh, uh, um, transgender going, men going in women's bathrooms, women going in men's bathrooms with your children in there. And now you want screaming and ruckus. It's your fucking fault. Especially you women. You know what I'm saying? Through the LGB movement, this is what the, this is what nothing good nothing good comes from evil, man. Homosexuality is an evil thing. It's an abominable thing. Nothing good is gonna come of that. I don't care how you put it, because the same way you put homosexuality is love, they're saying that what they're doing is love. The same the same talk. Now niggas gonna be fucking your kids, man. Women gonna be raping your kids, man. Walking around with your son and you can't do nothing to him because it'll be a hate crime. The same thing we deal with. You know what I'm saying? And it's enjoyable to see even though we have children. At the same time, it's enjoyable to see because Lord willing, our children remain protected. But as far as you motherfuckers, man, y'all deserve that shit, man. Y'all been pieces of shit and, and, and disobeying the most highest laws, man. Okay. So verse two it says that walk to go down to the uh, into Egypt and have not asked in my mouth. The Most High say go and have a a, 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 um, a LGB movement and protest about being a homosexual. But since you did it and you got it, now you open the floodgates. You open Pandora's box, right? To strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, you know Obama, uh, 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 Donald Trump, amongst many other people that gave you all them laws to do wickedness, man. And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. That's what it is right now. So now your kids are vulnerable because you want to be a faggot. Or you want to be a lesbian. So now the strength of Pharaoh should be a shame. Which is the loss. And the, and the military might. And the trust, of, trust in Egypt. The shadow of your confusion. <laughs> now you. Oh it ain't right. Man that's nasty. That's the same shit we saying. That's what we're saying. We've been telling y'all that the whole fucking time. It's just that, you know what, through the spirit, I want to say earlier, it kind of um, left me, but it came back. It, it, it's ironic how all the laws, especially with women, is it, catered to them having fun and doing what they want to do. They want to be they, they want to be lesbians because either a man fucked with them, they don't, uh, fucked over them, they don't know how to cope with that shit, or they've been molested and they don't know how to cope with that shit. Um... They want to be over men. They want to prophesy like men. Um, they want a man to have one wife. All these these modern day Christian ideologies 
it, it, it's built up to build up the women, man. You know what I'm saying? And you weak ass niggas, just like Adam and Eve, man. I ain't saying Adam Adam was a weak ass nigga, but Adam did fall short to a woman. So did Solomon. Solomon's a very strong uh, uh, man of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But modern day niggas is totally not even near that level. Okay. So don't don't get the example twisted. None of you niggas can square up spiritually with Sodom. Um, not Sodom, uh, Solomon. You know, Salakia. None of you can square spiritually with Solomon, but you can sure spiritually square up with Sodom. That's for damn sure. But none of y'all can spiritually square up with Adam. All right? You know, you don't have half the uh, resume. Okay? So, uh... So let's get this other one. So... We're going to get 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2. Uh, what? So chapter 2 verse 12, it says, Yea, and all that live un live godly in Yahweh Shai, um, it says, Yea, and all that live, that will live godly in Yahweh Shai shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived you know what i'm saying so that's what they've been doing it's, it's just the laws are getting worse and worse you know it's just getting worse and worse and there's going to be some shit this this is what they're talking about pedo pedo sexual that came from you can't say nothing what can you say that it's not right why are you ain't saying it's right shit homosexuality ain't right so how you can can you deny something you're being a hypocrite now you know, you're being a demonic hypocrite. So, you know, it's out of amongst thieves. You know what you motherfucking two thirds. But we've been telling you the whole time. The whole thing is wicked. So you can't, when the way the laws are set up through the most high, there is no loophole, man. There is no way for a, a demonic system to creep in, man. Especially after Yahweh Shai. Okay? It says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. What is that? That a homosexual, is a, a, a man laid with a man is an abomination and he should be surely put to death. The same thing with a women, with, with, with women, man. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Okay? It says, uh, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Okay? All scriptures given as, as, is given by inspiration of the Most High. And it's pro profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, for instruction and in righteousness. That's that's your fucking fault. That's all y'all worldly motherfuckers' fault. And it's enjoyable because you're seeing the, re the, the, the repercussions for being a fucking demon, man. You know? It's like, that's what y'all fucking dumbasses get. Now your, now your children is in danger of being fucked, man, by a grown-ass motherfucker, man. Because you want to be a dyke. Selfish man, you don't you ain't worried about how the world suffers from your personal actions because motherfuckers want to be homosexuals from personal shit. They ain't because how the world operates. Talking about that's nasty and you're not born like that. Well, ain't nobody born to be a faggot either, man. How you gonna try to put a concept on that and don't put a concept on homosexuality? It floats in both boats, man. As we said, both of them is wicked as hell. Scriptures tell you once a woman pass her flower, I uh, believe in Corinthians, then that's when she's able to be dealt with. But Esau ain't even, Esau took it way above and beyond, man. He don't care, man. He could be two years, fuck, two years fucking old, man. Talking about a, a, a righteous, a, a, a righteous pe a pedophile, a virtuous pedophile. I'm going to play the clip. Y'all brothers, uh, you know, stay up. And Kwame Ashala, and y'all all call her lawyer about she now shy. Kwame Ashala, and all praises to you. How about you, Ashala, once again? The Liberals term. now are beginning the normalization of pedophiles in a bold new campaign that will certainly boil your blood. Yes, Janet Apati for Salon reports, Salon no doubt, uh, that Todd Nickerson began to suspect that he was attracted to young girls when he was 13 years old. Then at the age of 18, he regularly babysat a five-year-old girl and eventually fell in love with her. Wow. 
uh, they write here, because he was molested at age seven, he knew the damage abuse caused and did not want to hurt the little girl. So he packed up and left town so that he did not offend. Later, it came out, he came out to his family as a pedophile. He came out. Do you see what's happening here? This is like, this is the liberal media at salon.com coming out and trying to normalize this coming out party, right? People are coming out as, as gay, people are coming out as lesbian, people are coming out as transsexual, and now people coming out as pedophiles. Yes, n the normalization process has begun. Remember, we did a story a couple days ago regarding the DSM-4, uh, and that document is the mental health document that, that catalogs every single you know, issue mentally, whatever. Well, they have now classified pedophilia uh, as a minor, a minor attracted person, they you know they've used some some fancy speech to clarify uh, what it is. Okay. Anyway, Nickerson, who's 43 years old now, says he's never abused a child and he never will. He is involved in a website called Virtuous Pedophiles that provides an online discussion forum for people that are attracted to children but do not want to act on it. I am a pedophile. I'm not a monster. I have the traction, but I don't act on it. I am Todd Nickerson. Uh, I'm a non-offending pedophile. I have never ever um, sexually abused a child. I never will. I do not look at child porn. I never will. I obey the laws. Uh, I respect the laws. I respect society's position on this. Uh, I understand it and uh, agree with it. I am part of one of the most hated groups of, of society. Um, no question about it. We are the scapegoats du jour. If you look at history, there's always one minority that seems to be the, you know, the, the one that everybody kind of persecutes, and I think we're it. I'm campaigning for better treatment of uh, people like me. Uh, you know, we're non-offending pedophiles. Not all pedophiles are child molesters, and not all child molesters are pedophiles. A pedophile is, strictly speaking, is just somebody who has the sexual attraction to children. Um, they may act on it, they may not. Pedophiles come from all walks of life. We, you know, we come from uh, all sorts of economic backgrounds, different occupations, and uh, we look like everybody else. There are a lot of teachers and people that, you know, who do work with kids, but I think most of us um, just hold regular jobs. How would you say you manage to control um, your sexual urges? A lot of people think that if you're attracted to kids that you, you have some kind of like unusual degree of urge to go out and you know attack kids and it's not like that. Most people, you know, when they see somebody that they're attracted to, do they automatically think, oh, I want to jump on them and have sex with them. So it's the same with us. It's just, you know, we just happen to be attracted to kids. What age groups are you attracted to? I would say it probably starts about four three, four years old, and then goes up into early 20s, late teens, early 20s, and uh, it kind of peaks at about um, like nine, 10 years old. I'm a political activist for Virtuous Pedophiles, which is a forum that I belong to. Uh, I'm out, you know, uh, talking to the media and things and um, basically making the case for Verped. The forum is devoted to helping pedophiles who do not want to offend. There are approximately a few thousand members 
We have people who do feel um, guilty, deal with shame, and we try to uh, help them get past that because, um, you know, they didn't choose their sexuality, you know, as long as they're not acting on it and they're devoted to um, doing the right thing. Uh, we, you know, our philosophy is there's no reason to feel guilty for that. When people say we can talk the sexual about revolution has been or... a slippery slope toward increasing degeneracy, they're not wrong. However, I would slightly alter that description. The slippery slope isn't exactly accurate. You see, the slippery slope describes a course of action likely to lead to something bad or disastrous. However, in the case of the sexual revolution, this has been more like a snowball rolling down a hill. Not only does the snowball move down the hill relentlessly, but it also gathers speed and mass as it travels. This, for me, is a perfect analogy for the destructive process of sexual liberalization. Not only has this trend moved in a dangerous direction, but over time it has accelerated and gained momentum whilst also becoming larger and encompassing an ever-growing number of degenerate lifestyles. Eventually, this snowball has become like a veritable avalanche of degeneracy which threatens to crush everything decent and wholesome that lies in its path. But I am well aware that all of what I say will be hotly contested by liberal-minded folk and those who push the LGBT agenda. LGBT, for anyone that has been living under a rock, stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender. And when I say LGBT agenda, I'm not attacking every single person who isn't heterosexual. Over the course of my political career, I have met many individuals who aren't heterosexual and who are appalled by the debased degeneracy and the overtly destructive and hypersexualized material peddled by the cultural Marxists who push the LGBT agenda. It is important to note that not every homosexual seeks to walk down the street in a black leather thong with a pink feather boa around his neck, like an extra from the Blue Oyster Bar. And if you don't get the Blue Oyster Bar reference, you probably didn't grow up in the 80s watching Police Academy, but I'm sure you can find the scene on YouTube. You see, I'm not criticising people for simply being homosexual. I'm criticising those who push the LGBT agenda and who wish to portray homosexuality as normal, natural and most importantly as a viable and healthy alternative to heterosexual relations and the traditional nuclear family. And that is exactly what the cultural Marxists have done. They have taken homosexuality out of the closet and they have pushed the LGBT agenda and used it to make increasingly degenerate acts acceptable in order to open the door for far worse. And the LGBT agenda has paved the way for a vast array of other damaging and degenerate types of sexual behaviour to become normalised. You see, the LGBT agenda is just another attack on the West perpetuated by cultural Marxists who are committed to the eventual destruction of everything that underpins Western society. And before anyone says the LGBT agenda is all about equality, it's just about equal rights and doing what's fair and just by homosexuals, well that is rubbish. And I can debunk that argument rather quickly and effectively. For any of you who have been to a so-called gay pride festival or observed one in pictures or on the television, what have you seen? What sights do you behold? Now, if homosexuals were looking to simply be accepted, to be seen as normal and just wanted to be seen as everyday folk who just happened to have a different sexual preference, how do you think they should act? How do you think they would act? 
Well, if that was the case, I would expect gay pride marches and events to be a group of men and women dressed completely normally, maybe even dressed how they would do every day for work. Walking down the street in an ordered fashion with signs saying something like, we're just like you, but we simply have a different sexual preference. Seeing men and women walking down the street with such signs, dressed in suits, work clothes or other regular attire, and with placards pointing out their similarities to others, would surely be the best way to call for equality and harmony, would it not? However, the idea of people dressed normally parading down the street in an ordered and respectable fashion is about as far from gay pride as you could possibly get. Gay pride marches are not about equality. They are about pushing degeneracy. And this can be seen quite clearly by the sights that can be seen there. I've seen images from gay pride events where men walk down the street naked, where men dressed as dogs are led down the street on all fours by other men. I've seen pictures of groups of people with giant blow-up penises or those who are waving sex toys. In fact, displays of nudity, perversion, bondage and extreme sexual fetishes are the norm for these type of events. At a gay pride rally, you could find almost every form of sick and debased sexual fetish being celebrated and openly flaunted in a public place. But let's take a step back for a second. Let's draw a little comparison. If a father was to take his 13-year-old son to a strip club to see some boobs, I mean, most 13-year-old boys love boobs and are very, very curious about females, especially attractive ones. What do you think would happen to that father? Now, I'm betting if it was publicly revealed that he had taken his son to a strip club, he would be publicly admonished. In fact, he would be pilloried and would likely be interviewed by social services and the police and potentially may lose access to his child. Now, before anyone starts in the comments, I'm not saying fathers should take their children to strip clubs. As much as most 13-year-old boys would want to see boobs, that's not good parenting. But we're drawing a comparison here. So, please, let me continue. For allowing a 13-year-old boy into a strip club to see topless ladies, a parent would be strung up. But what would happen if the same father took his 13-year-old son to a gay pride rally? The boy would see all manner of sexual depravity and would certainly be exposed to far worse than simply bare breasts. In fact, that boy would see sadomasochism, the boy would see full frontal nudity, the boy would see sex toys and all manner of sexualized material. He would see men sucking on lollipops shaped as penises. He would see other men dressed as leather-clad dogs crawling down the street for the pleasure of their partner. And he would probably see far, far worse. In fact, if a father took his 13-year-old son to a gay pride rally, that boy would be exposed to far more sexualized material, degeneracy and sick sexual fetishes than he would ever see at a strip club. Yet let's look at how the father would be treated for taking his son to a gay pride rally. Would he be admonished as he would if he took his son to the relatively tame strip club? No. For taking a 13-year-old boy to a gay pride rally and exposing that boy to all that sexual madness and depravity, a parent would be held up as a beacon of tolerance and decency. The father would be praised as progressive and open-minded and congratulated for bringing his son up with such wondrous liberal values. You see how this works? Now, I'm not saying that 13-year-old boys should be taken to strip clubs. But what I am saying is that a strip club pales into comparison when it comes to the sexually charged and debased scenes that are witnessed at a gay pride event. 
Yet those events are encouraged and parents who take their children along to them are smiled upon. And this is just a small example of how this push for sexual liberalisation and so-called equality isn't actually about equality, but is about pushing a damaging agenda that eats away at the moral fabric of our society. But as I said earlier, the sexual liberalisation of the Western world is like a snowball rolling down a hill. And what was outrageous and pushed the envelope of decency yesterday is relatively passé and normal by today's standard. Equally, what is outrageous today and pushes the bounds of decency will likely be normalised tomorrow. This is how the cultural Marxists push an agenda and over time the snowball rolls down the hill, gathering both momentum and mass as it crashes through every barrier and bulwark of decency. But the most worrying aspect of the sexual liberalisation of the West is that it is going far further than just normalising homosexuality. It's going far further than gay pride events or shows of public nudity or sexual fetishes. The same people who once pushed the LGBT agenda are now pushing the liberalisation of attitudes toward incest, bestiality and even paedophilia. And yet again, the cultural Marxists are using the media to do this. And if you don't believe me, here are some examples. And not from minor back alley publications, but from major news sources that have millions of readers. We'll get started with the Huffington Post which has run several articles on incest. One headline read, Incest should be legal, experts argue. And they've run other similar articles, and the comment sections are usually rather horrifying. New York Magazine ran an article on an anonymous man who was in a relationship with a horse. Yep, you heard me right. He was in a relationship with a horse. New York Magazine wrote, But the sexual identity that can be attached to bestiality, zoophilia, remains little understood. In 2002, the sex therapist Harney Miletsky published Understanding Bestiality and Zoophilia, a book based on her study of almost 100 zoophiles. Research that led her to conclude that many form deep, loving and very nurturing relationships with their animal partners. Salon ran an article on Todd Nickerson, a self-proclaimed paedophile who wrote of how he was not a monster. In the article, Salon tried to normalise paedophilia as just another sexual orientation, which is only harmful if the paedophile chooses to act on those urges. Vice an online news site that also has a channel on Sky, ran with the headline, A paedophile opens up about being targeted by vigilantes. This article talks about the stigma attached to being a paedophile. It then goes on to attempt to make the reader feel sorry for the paedophile in question, before finally asserting that stigmatising paedophiles can in fact endanger children. All of the links to the articles I've mentioned can be found in the description below. But what ties all of these articles together, other than the fact that they push for increased sexual liberalisation and for the envelope of degeneracy to be pushed even further? Well, what unites these articles is the way that they frame their arguments. All of these articles frame their arguments using emotion. In the same way that the media pushed the LGBT agenda based on the argument that if two consenting adults want to do something, why shouldn't they do it? And why shouldn't they do it in public? They now push incest. After all, they argue, if two grown adult siblings want to be in a relationship, why shouldn't they? Sure. The children they may have may be born with severe defects, but they can use contraception. 
What is it of your business? You see what they are doing? Just in the same way that they normalised homosexuality and with just the same arguments, they seek to normalise things that are far worse. The emotional tricks these people use to convince the public of their warped agenda also usually involve making the public feel sorry for the sickos and mentally ill perverts who they wish to normalise. For example, the article from New York Magazine stated that many people who have relationships with animals form deep, loving and very nurturing relationships with their animal partners. Note the use of the word love. The cultural Marxists can't get enough of the word love, and in their push for gay marriage to be adopted, use that word relentlessly. In fact, the phrase legalise love was often used as a campaign slogan for the gay rights movement. And that slogan is now being used to push for far darker taboos, to be dragged out of the closet. Because after all, who can deny love? No further arguments are needed other than that appeal to emotion. The final trick the media use is to make you feel sorry for those who carry out acts of bestiality, incest or even paedophilia. Vice talks of the hardships paedophiles face when being targeted by vigilantes and uses words like stigma to make you feel pity for child molesters. Salon does the same thing, asking readers not to judge paedophiles without first listening to them. All the buzzwords and emotional tricks these people have used to normalise homosexuality are now being used to ensure that the total sexual liberalisation of the West is achieved. The enemies of the West started the ball rolling with the legalisation and acceptance of homosexuality, which went from simply allowing homosexuals the right to do as they wished in the privacy of their own homes, to allowing public displays of completely debased and degenerate acts, and then finally, to allowing gay marriage and even gay adoption. Now, the enemies of the West are pushing the envelope of degeneracy even further. All the emotional cues are rolled out. One shouldn't judge. A person should never be stigmatised for their sexual identity. Sexuality isn't a choice. These people are born this way. What adults do is their own business. And finally, and most importantly, love should never be illegal. And all of a sudden, the public, who have been conditioned to accept these flawed but highly emotionally charged arguments are now seeing these arguments used to normalise the most vile and twisted sexual practices imaginable. Bestiality, incest and even paedophilia. You see, cultural Marxists didn't push this aggressive LGBT agenda because they care about homosexuals. They pushed it because it was destructive to moral values and decency and undermined central pillars of Western society, like the traditional family. If these cultural Marxists cared for homosexuals, they wouldn't be flooding the West with Muslims. But that's the point. All cultural Marxists care for is destroying the European people and Western civilization. And they will use any means necessary to do so. And sexual liberalisation and the LGBT agenda is just another means to an end for them. The cultural Marxists pushed the LGBT agenda as they knew what they were doing and where it would lead. They started that snowball rolling in order to bury the West under an avalanche of degeneracy.